If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. I'd like to talk to you today about a godly mother. A godly mother. I'm here to say uh, I, I truly had a godly mother. Uh, my mom has been gone uh, six years, almost seven years now. And uh, I tell you, I think about her every day. Uh, she truly was the glue that held uh, our family together. My father worked. Uh, he worked for Southwestern Bell. He was the only PBX repairman. Those who know that age group, you'll know what I'm talking about uh, before computers and all that. Uh, but his area was the, the west side of Oklahoma City. From Oklahoma City to the Texas line was his. So he was gone a lot. And uh, my mom was there. Uh, she was, uh, she took us to all of our sports, uh, any PTA, anything that uh, we had, she took us to that. Uh, she was our taxi. Uh, she went to my ball games, and uh, there were a lot of ball games there, and and really raised all four of us uh, in the admonition of the Lord. And I thank God for her. And so today, I want to share with you four characteristics of a godly mother. Number one, she is a woman of praise. She is a one of, but of praise. And I know many of you are already this, already this, okay? But I just want you to, just to remind you how important a praise is. And also, folks, this applies to everyone, okay? I know it's Mother's Day, and we are celebrating mothers. Uh, but we as Christians need to do all four of these things also. So she is a woman of praise. Number two, a woman of prayer. A woman of prayer. Number three, a woman of trust. A woman of trust. And number four, a woman of fear. And when I say fear, it's not being afraid of something. Okay, I'm talking about fearing God and honoring God. You know, I, I know that moms are kind of the glue that holds our families together. And, uh, you know, when we were sick, our moms was there to help us with that. Uh, when we... Uh, you know, hurt ourselves. Uh, you know, you know how dads are, okay? You know, dads, when you're, you're bleeding, you know, he says, "Ah, oh, wipe it off. You ain't hurt." You know, dads are just that way. Uh, but moms are the ones that'll wipe it off. Uh, they'll give it a good kiss and put a bandaid on it. And uh, so, moms are just so tender. Uh, they're so loving. And folks, I, I'm just telling you, way back when Adam was by himself. God knew exactly what Adam needed. Needed a woman, a, a helpmate, a wife. And I am telling you, I don't know about you, and Stephen, we say this all the time, we couldn't do what we do without our wives. It's just like taking time off. Folks, my wife spends most of her time either figuring out or waiting for me to get home. Okay? And there are times, you know, when we get away like this, uh, that we just totally give our wives uh, that time. And folks, they deserve our time. All moms and wives deserve our time. So let's look at this. A woman of praise. Psalm 34, 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. Folks, praise comes from the heart. Praise comes from the heart. And even as I was looking at the children, uh, I was thinking about heaven, and I was thinking about angels. Think about it. Remember those choruses that our Scripture says, we will all be singing. We will all be praising. And I will say this, and again, I'm not saying moms are perfect, but I'm telling you, moms are angelic at times. They said when I was a young kid, I was a colic baby, which basically means I cried a lot, all right? And I can remember, maybe not as an infant, but when I could first remember, my mom would get me in the rocking chair and she would sing to me church songs. She would sing songs of comfort to me. And I thank God for our praising uh, moms. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And folks, they're the ones, you know, moms are great encouragers, okay? They encourage us to get back in the game. They encourage us to, to get up off the mat. 
They encourage us uh, in our schoolwork, and they encourage us uh, even when we start to go to jobs and, and have jobs and responsibility. Moms are great encouragers. In verse 2, And my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. I found it interesting that Psalm 34, the phrase, the Lord is used 16 times in Psalm 34. What does that tell me? How important the Lord is. Folks, our moms, my dad was working all the time, and my mom took us to church when we were very, very little. And she got saved, all right, when, when just me and my older sister uh, was, I was in the nursery, and she was, uh, she was a little older, two years older than me. And because of her salvation, my father started going to church, and he got saved also. So it was my mom that started us going to church at Cameron Baptist Church many, many years ago. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. She took us to worship. My parents took us to worship. I thank God, all right? See, I'm 62 years old, and even nine months before I was born, I was in church. She worked in the nursery, and she carried me in the nursery. And I thank God for moms. You think of the teachers, all right, teachers. All the teachers that teach in this church are so important. All the moms that teach at school and educate our children are so important. They play a vital part in spiritual education and in educating our children. Verse 3, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let's exalt his name together. And folks, the moms would put the emphasis on the Lord. On the Lord. They didn't want to take credit for what was going on. My mom cooked three meals a day. My mom was there uh, and, and got us up. My dad went to work somewhere between 6 and 6.30 every day, and we didn't even see him in the mornings. And then he wouldn't be home. He'd work till 6 or 7 at night. She would cook a supper and leave his plate on the stove so that when he came in, he could eat. And so, moms, I, I know uh, how important you are. And, folks, we want to thank you, moms. We want to praise you. We want to show you and tell you how much we appreciate that. Even in my college age, when I was uh, 18 and 19 years old, folks, I was not doing the right thing. I was still at home, and they had a curfew, and I would break that curfew. And I found later on that my mom would be the one that would stay up, and she would not go to sleep till I came home. Folks, that is so important. I do not think I would be where I am today without a godly mother that gave praise to the Lord. The second thing, no, Psalm 138. I've, I've got another scripture I want to share. Psalm 138, verse 1. I will praise you with my whole heart. And folks, we know praise comes from the heart. That's why I love our praise and worship music. Folks, our children love to sing. They love to sing, and it's so important part of our worship services. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship you toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. And folks, when you think of praise, you think of songs. And a lot of the songs that we sing, and in the Baptist hymnals, if you look at the top of the Baptist hymnals, there is a scripture reference for every song that is in the hymnal. Praise is so important, my friend. Verse 3, in the day when I cried out to you, you answered me, and you made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. And I love to hear men's quartets. I love to hear men singing. But sometimes, Steve, when you say, ladies, sing the second verse, I'm just telling you, it is angelic 
to me. It is what heaven's going to be like to us. So a godly mom is a woman of praise. Number two, she is a woman of prayer. Look at verse four. And I sought the Lord and he heard me. Folks, I thank God for praying moms. Praying moms. Moms who are on their knees praying for their children and praying for their husband and praying for their grandchildren. Moms that are uh, praying for folks in the hospital when someone was in the hospital. It was mom that would stay the night. I had a sister Susan that was very, very sick early on. And for her first two years, she spent half of those years in the hospital. And it was my mom that was praying for her. And even after uh, she come home, I, I saw my mom more than once in her bedroom praying for my sister Susan. And folks, prayer is so important to our family. Prayer is so important to our, our church. Prayer is so important to our country. We need to pray for our children and the generations and, and for revival in our country. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. I was thinking of the radiance there. And you know what I thought of, ladies? I thought of your wedding day. I'd done several weddings. And I'm telling you, the ladies will take hours to get ready for a wedding. I've been there. I asked them, what time do you want me there? Okay, five minutes before we start, you know, that's what I do. What time are you going to get there? Four hours before it starts. And I'm telling you, even with Lori, I can remember the day at Cameron Baptist Church. I can remember facing her and, and holding her hands and saying our vows. I'm telling you, she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever met. And folks, that's what a praising mom is. It's that radiance in their countenance. It's that radiance in their hearts. It's those words, those angelic words of praise. And that's what he is talking about here. Folks, we need men and women of prayer, but women of prayer. And, and the deal is, little prayer means little strength. It is so important that we pray for our families and pray for situations in life. You have to realize there are times in our life with, where prayer is all we can do. One of the things I hated about being, uh, you know, 285 miles from my parents was if something happened in the yard to my parents, I couldn't just jump in the car and go. And all I could do was pray. And folks, our moms, many moms, are women of prayer, and that is so, so important. Little prayer, little strength, much prayer, much strength. And even praying, and here's what I found out, instead of worrying about things, moms, we need to pray about things. Pray about things, because God hears our every prayer. And their faces were not ashamed. And folks, publicly praying, I know some people have a hard time doing that, and I understand that, I really do. But to hear a mom say a, a fervent prayer, to hear a mom uh, lift up their children and their husband, there's just something really, really special about this. And this poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him. Folks, I am telling you, heartfelt prayers, sincere prayers, intercession prayers, prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of encouragement, and saved him out of all his troubles. And the angels of the Lord encamps around all those who fears him and delivers him. Folks, I'm being totally honest when I say this. When I got in trouble, I did not call my dad. All right? He'd already given me some advice. He said, if you get put in jail, don't waste your quarter. My dad told me that. All right? And when I got in trouble, I called my mom. All right? Why? One is, I knew she was there all the time. I knew that she would be calm. 
okay? And she would care. Not that my dad didn't care. I don't want to paint him as a bad father. It's just that he worked so much, all right? He did. He was gone all the time. And it was my mom that was there for me. It was my mom that prayed for me. It was my mom, even when I got in trouble, that I went to. And the reason I did, and here it is, folks, I knew she would do the right thing. Folks, she taught Sunday school. She worked in Bible school. She worked in all assets, all the the nurseries and the preschool. She worked in church all the time. And folks, I knew uh, uh, things would be better When mom prayed and I listened to her, I just learned things went a lot better. Philippians chapter 4. Go with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. There's that woman of praise. See, moms tend to be more positive. Moms moms tend to see the silver lining. Folks, there's a silver lining behind every cloud. There really is. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God and those who are called according to their purpose. And folks, I'm telling you, mom, it's a calling, all right? It's a ministry. Moms are. And the Bible says, Verse 5, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And I I love the calmness. You know, my mom was just so calm. You know, when when things were not going well, uh, one of the things I remember, uh, uh, my father, again, working for the phone company, they would have contracts, and these contracts would run out. And then they just, they didn't lay everybody off, but until the contracts got negotiated, you know, they, they, they didn't. I mean, he didn't get a paycheck. He didn't get anything. And I can remember my mom saying, and, and my father, he went out and, you know, got some part-time job. But I remember my father, mom telling my father one night, I was listening to them, and she just said, Lloyd, it's going to be okay. God's going to take care of us. And folks, that's what a praying mom will do. Uh, they will turn to the Lord and they will turn to Scripture. Now here it is. Look at verse 6. Be anxious for nothing. Okay? Folks, anxious is worry. Ladies, don't worry. Don't worry. Worry changes nothing. I've heard it described as a rocking chair. Worry is like a rocking chair. You can get a lot of motion going, but you are going nowhere. All right? Turn those worries into prayer. My friend, prayer changes things. God has answered so many prayers in our lives. So many prayers. And I believe with all my heart, praying moms, praying moms, interceding on behalf of their husbands and children is one of the best things a godly mother can do. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Folks, pray about everything. Pray about everything. And folks, I I just believe with all my heart, God will come through. God will give you the answers. And here it is. And the peace of God will which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds through the Lord Jesus Christ. I think one of the hardest things parents have to do is go through the loss of a child or a child having cancer or a child having a major thing in their lives, a major health issue in their lives. And folks, that is a time that we must bear down and pray even harder. Folks, only God can give you peace through times like that. Only our Heavenly Father. That's why I chose the psalm. The psalms are songs of comfort. Are songs of comfort. And it's our moms that are comforting us. It's our moms that are supporting us. It's our moms that pray and believe. It's those moms. 
and the peace of God. And folks, there's nothing better than to have the peace of God in your lives, which surpasses all understanding. Folks, God is always up to something. God has a reason and a purpose for everything that happens in your life. So I thank God for the praying moms that are there for us and will guard our hearts and minds through Christ. You know, something that happens a lot, folks, Satan tries to, to get into our heads. Satan tries to tell us it's not going to work out. Satan tries to tell us you are doomed. Satan tries to tell us that, you know, you must have sin in your life. That's why this is happening. And folks, through prayer, through prayer, you can have that calm assurance that everything's going to be all right. So we see a woman of praise, a woman of prayer, and a woman of trust. The third thing, look back in our text in verse 8. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Oh, folks, God is so good. He is so good to us. I mean, he just blesses us all the time. I was driving to church this morning, and, you know, it was really cloudy uh, as I was coming in. And I look over to the east, and through these clouds, the sunshine was shining down just probably about as far as it is, is in this building across the eastern sky. And it just stood out. It was one of those God moments in my life that God showed me, all right, that he is the light. And you know what it made me think? It made me think of that day when the eastern sky will be broken open and Jesus will come back for his children. My heart just went up. I mean, I almost had tears in my eyes because of him showing me a glimpse of that on the way to church. And I'm telling you, when I get to heaven, after I see Jesus, one of the first people I want to see is my mom. My mom and I were very close. Uh, my mom gave me great advice uh, my mom was there for me, and I just want to once again thank her for all that she did. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know the other reason I love my mom? She was a great cook. I'm just telling you, that lady made the best bits of the gravy. Uh, she made enchiladas. She, oh, man, my, all three of my sisters moved out when they were 18 years old. All three of them got married and moved out. I stuck it around until I was 22 years old, all right? And you know what my dad said to me? He said, either get your own apartment or get married. You've been in this house long enough. That's what he said. So I got a job, and I decided to get married. And folks, you, you can't compare wives, our wives, to moms. Okay, you only get one mom, okay? But I am telling you, Lori is a great helpmate. She's a great mom. She was a wonderful mom and, a, again, a wonderful grandmother. So taste and see the Lord is good. And look at this. Blessed is the man or woman who trusts in him. Folks, all relationships are based on trust. All relationships. And there's just something about a mother's trust, and there's just something about a mother's love. You see it, all right? She trusts her husband. Proverbs 31, I, I was thinking about preaching on Proverbs 31, but the Lord led me this way. And there are so many. If, if you would just read Proverbs 31 sometime today, 10, ver, 10, verse 10 through 31, you will see your mom in these Scriptures, and you will thank God that she is a woman of trust. Look at Psalm 37. Just go over a couple of chapters. Psalm 37. Psalm 37, a woman of trust. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. 
Oh, ladies, it's very important that you have a, a, a quiet time. Ladies, it's very important that you, and I know you're busy. I know we're all busy, but we have to take the time to spend time in God's Word. Spend time reading God's Word. There's so many distractions, folks. Our phones, our computers, the television, so many. But every morning we need to read it before we go, and we need to, before we go to bed, read it at night. All right, that will help you, that will guide you, that will give you uh, good advice and give you godly advice for our children. Verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Oh, folks, it really is, ladies, it, it's an honor to be a mom. All right, it was what you were created for. It was what you were created to be. Verse 5, commit your way to the Lord and trust also in Him. Oh, listen to me, folks. We can trust God. We trusted Him at salvation. We trusted Him at salvation, and we can trust Him with every part of our lives. I think of examples in the Bible. I think of Abraham, who God spoke to and said, take your son and sacrifice your son. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? But I'm telling you, he had a plan. It was the perfect picture of what Jesus was going to do for us. And if anyone sacrificed, I know Jesus did the ultimate sacrifices, but most of the time it's moms that do the sacrifice. They're sacrificing their time. They're fat, you know, sacrificing uh, their money and, and they're, they're sacrificing you know, uh, labor and work for the good of the family and, and for their children. Trust in Him also and He shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as a light and your justice as the noon day. I'm telling you, a lot of times when mom comes in rooms, the rooms just light up. They really light up. When we need something, what do we go to? We go to our moms. When we want something, what do we do? We go to our moms. All right? And God says a woman of trust is such a blessing. I thank God for you moms that have that strong faith in your life. And the last thing I want to share with you, not only a woman of praise, a woman of prayer, a woman of trust, but a woman of fear. A woman of fear. Look at verse 9 and 10. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saint. Fears uh, is not this shaking and being afraid of God. Fear is having that all for God, that respect for God. Fear is honoring God. And I am telling you, there's many times I would talk to my mom and she would give me advice and I would tell her I was going to do it, and then later on I wouldn't do it. All right, And most of the time, folks, it did not turn out well for me. Why? Because my mom knew the Word of God. My mom feared God. And the fear of God is so, so important. There is no want to those who fear Him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good you know what it truly means to fear god it means to put god first in your life the bible tells us in matthew to seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you folks you put god first in your life and i promise you things will work out for the good proverbs 9 Proverbs 9. Go with me to Proverbs 9. Proverbs 9, verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man or woman, and he or she will be wiser. Folks, that's listening to the Word of God. Matter of fact, Proverbs is called the wisdom chapters. It's the wisdom book. We need to go through uh, Proverbs and, and learn and, and, and we never get too old to learn something, folks. 
Every day you can learn something in God's holy word. Teach a just man or woman, and he will increase in learning. Here it is. Fear the, Lord. the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know what wisdom is? It's knowing the mind of God and doing it. You can know what the Word says. You can know in your head you should be doing it, but if you don't do it, you are not wise. Wisdom comes from knowing God, knowing His Word. Wisdom comes from listening to the Holy Spirit. Knowing, folks, we, we were taught, we are the basics in life, we have been taught. But that doesn't mean we're going to do it. I think of a verse, train up a child. Train up a child. And I know, even in my own life, I experienced that in my life. I, I wondered from God. But I'm telling you, they will come back to you. It may not be on your time schedule. It may not be when you want them to come back. But I am telling you, that training, keep training, keep believing, keep doing what God asks us to do. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and your years will be added unto you. And folks, I think it's that godly wisdom that my parents, and especially my mom, uh, instilled in me, instilled in me, which helps me to be what I am today. Folks, I'm telling you, I was described in school as a challenge. I was <laughs> described in church as ornery. Okay? And the reason I tell you these things, because I'm telling you, never lose hope. Never. It's never too late to come to Christ. It's never too late to turn your life around. We've all messed up, folks. We've all strayed from God. But I'm telling you that that godly love, that tender love that, that moms have is something that you should treasure in your life. You should treasure that. And my prayer today is that we, we, especially and when I say we, Christians as a whole, we will do these things. We will be men and women of praise. We will be men and women of prayer. We will be men and women of trust. And we will be men and women of fear. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I just thank you. Thank you so much for our moms. God, they are truly, truly special. God, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit that is here I thank you that your blessing is on our church. God, I thank you for everyone in this sanctuary. God, I thank you that they chose to be with us today. And God, I pray that if you have spoken to them in any way, Lord, especially about salvation, maybe somebody else has been doubting their salvation. Maybe somebody else is just not sure. They're not sure. And, and through the baptism we witnessed, Lord, that would be an encouragement to follow through. God, I pray if folks need to rededicate their life or come for baptism, or God, even church membership, God, what a wonderful day it would be. And it is, Lord. It's a wonderful day in you. And I thank you for Mother's and Mother's Day. God, this is your invitation. This is your church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come? We thank you for joining us this morning at Rye Hill Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.